Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of blizzard development, we shall fear no balance patch, for the light is with us. Our hammers and transmogs shall always comfort us. We will walk in gloriousness and awesomeness for all our time played. Woe unto those who seek to nerf our beloved holy paladin, for they shall be smited with angry tweets and devoured in forum flames. Remember this day, brothers and sisters of the light. There we stood, just moments away from an evil and unjust nerf. And then, out of nowhere, Brother Ellesmere, hammer in hand and wings out, lit up X or Twitter or whatever the fuck with a post proposing a better way. The chaotic blizzard gods accepted his great wisdom and not only reverted the nerf, but blessed us with a small buff in Mythic Plus. A salute to High Lord Ellesmere and his great wisdom and a salute to the chaotic gods of Blizzard who allowed reason to satiate their sinister need to pull a random nerf out of their ass. The nerf was reverted and peace has been restored. For now. There's a lot of problems in Mythic Plus, supposedly. But let's just start out with the positives and say, absolutely without a doubt, Blizzard dungeon content is without peer. It's without peer. And I, I'm, look, I'm as frustrated as you guys are in a lot of ways. Uh, in some ways, I think the frustration isn't really worth it. But let's just all be honest. If you want to play dungeon content, there is nothing like World of Warcraft out there. And it's really incredible. I mean, you've just got to give Blizzard props because the dungeon content and the feel of playing through it, I mean, yes, the tuning and the balance and all that, those are all problems. But there is nothing like World of Warcraft dungeons, period. Mythic Plus is in such a weird spot right now because the success that it built upon in Dragonflight was that a lot of pugs had a lot of success. Pugs are a huge, if not the majority, of the Mythic Plus community. Now, most certainly the best players and the most highly skilled players are up here at the top. But if you actually got rid of all the people that run, let's just say, sixes and below even, I think that would be a huge chunk of your community. I mean, I would be included in that. And there's this idea that if that's all you run, then, you know, what you do doesn't matter. And most certainly it's true that the spec probably doesn't matter. Like, the spec isn't what's holding you back. It's just investment in learning the mechanics and learning the dungeons and everything. But this is where you run into the real problems with Mythic Plus. You know what the real problems with Mythic Plus are? Time and skill. On the one end, you have like the content creators and the high level guys. And for them, this is actually like a full-time job. I mean, for some of them, it, it just is their job. Consider for a second all the participation of high level players and particularly content creators prior to the season even starting. They played the alpha, they played the beta where they just ran keys over and over and over and over again. Then you had the three weeks building up to the season where they ran the mythics over and over and got the best in slot and got their crafted or whatever, prepared to get their crafted gear or whatever. And then the season launches and they're just doing mythic keys all night, every night, over and over. And then when they're done on one character, they switch over to their alt and run that and they run that and they run that. And then at the highest level, they all figure out what the meta is. They hop on their meta specs and they run it up the flagpole as high as they can. Compare that to the every dad that logs on for a few hours a week fills up their vault and logs off. That's me. I mean, I fill my vault up and then I'm usually done. To me, it seems like an impossible task to appeal to both of those communities. But my argument is you don't have to because most certainly the higher level players are the most skilled players, but they're also the players that spend the most time playing, right? That's part of what makes them so skilled. And when you compare the amount of time they invest versus what a casual or just, you know, regular player invest, you're talking about an exponential difference in time spent in this dungeon in this game mode. And the argument from that community is always, we're the best players and we put the time in so we should get the best gear. But my argument is this, those guys aren't going anywhere, right? They're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter what you do to Mythic Plus. You could tune it down, tune it up, work it around in a circle, put 
pretty pink bows throughout every dungeon. It doesn't matter what you do. Those guys aren't going anywhere, especially the content creators that just do WoW content. If all they do is Mythic Plus content or raid content or whatever, you own them. They're not going anywhere. Their bread and butter is what you do. Why would you tailor to them? The people that you should be concerned about, in my opinion, and this is crazy because everybody always tells me how important retention is, but those are the same people that tell me that Mythic Plus should be developed for the elites. But the elites are never going to stop Mythic Plusing. They're going nowhere. What do I tell you? You could break this up into white powder and put it on a dirty toilet, and they'd be down there taking it off the... <laughs> Oh, that's my shit. This is their dopamine. This is their hobby. This is their passion. But you have people that actually will leave. And I know the elite community likes to argue that, you know, the people that are doing twos and sixes don't matter. But yeah, they actually do to the company that's trying to keep people sub to the game. What is Mythic Plus really? Let's just get really honest here for a second. It's a gear treadmill made to keep you entertained so that you'll keep giving this company $15 a month. And the longer they can drag it out, the better, which is part of the difficulty increases, I think. But my argument is for the long-term health of Mythic Plus, you need to tailor this to pugs. Pugs need to be able to do this reasonably well. If you're going to say, I don't get the most elite gear. Well, that's fine. That makes sense to me. The problem is you supercharge this game mode all at once. You may change this to tank survivability. You may change this to CC. The new affixes, I mean, make sure you bring a shaman. I mean, just the fact that they're going off in the middle of a boss fight or they'll wreck your key in the middle of a boss fight is ridiculous. Now, to be fair, we do have delves now, okay? And hopefully delves are catching some of those people who are like, you know, Mythic Plus is overtuned, but I can still fall back and have access to this casual content. And that will catch a certain number of people, most certainly. And I hear you on the argument, well, that's the casual content and this is the competitive content, so we should be able to tune in however we want. Again, though, Delves are going to catch a certain number of people, but there's a lot of people that Delves don't do it for. And there's a lot of people that really enjoy pugging keys. I think pugs make up a huge portion of the community, and I think low to mid-level keys make up the majority of the runs. High-level players aren't going anywhere, and pugs are your lifeline. So you should build this game mode with that in mind. And I think they have really screwed that up this season. And so it's just such an awkward position when the whole game mode is about retention, right? It's about keeping people on a gear treadmill to get $15 a month out of them. But they seem to tailor it to the people that are never going to stop doing it. And then the people that you really could lose that you need to work on retaining, they could care less on developing it for them even though when the last expansion was wildly successful be because pugging was wildly successful. I mean, you could pug all the way up to plus tens, no problem. And yeah, you had to put in effort and work, but it wasn't this hard. It wasn't this hard. And I mean, paladins were awful in season four. I mean, really awful. They're better now in the war within, kind of, but I mean, nothing's a shaman. You can do still do it as another healer. And the keys that I'm pushing, you can do it without even having a shaman. It's a lot harder, bring a shaman. I pop my wings and I stand my ground on my position. Stop tuning and developing Mythic Plus around people that never stop playing it. You own them. They are never going to stop. You need to consider the people that will actually leave the game and stop playing if you make it too hard or unreasonable. Because at some point, they're not getting dopamine, okay? The freaks at the top, they'll go and they'll die 150 times to knock out plus 10s for the first week to get their, you know, vault filled up with Mythic Track gear. That is a level of dedication a lot of people, A, don't want to participate in, and B, don't have time to. Yes, those guys are very skilled. I'm not saying they're not. They're incredible players. They're the best players in the world. They're also the most dedicated players, and they spend the most time playing. That's part of it. I always say this about the PvP community. All the gladiators, I have, you know, super gladiator and duper gladiator and super duper gladiator, and I'm all this shit. And it's like, yeah, bro, you've spent more time in queue than most people have played the game. And part of you being so elite and so awesome is most people don't want to play the game that much. It's also true that a lot of people could put that time in and still not be as good. Skill is a factor. I'm not saying it's not, but time is a huge part of that skill development. If you're streaming this game six hours a night, night in and night out for three, four, five nights a week, you damn sure better be a lot better than a guy like me who logs in and fills up their vault and then I go play other games. But the guy that will leave and play other games, you've got to focus on keeping that person.
the other people, they're, they're not going anywhere. So when you consider all the changes that we talked about, it seems to me that they ratcheted up Mythic Plus to be more difficult. And I think what they might have thought is that, hey, if we make this more difficult, it'll drag it out. But what you've actually done is you've really hurt your pug community. And like I said, you dropped 300,000 here and maybe that's pretty standard, maybe it is, but let's see what this does. If this keeps going down and down and down, I think what you need to do is reconsider what I'm telling you right now. The best Mythic Plus seasons are when pugging is very viable, very viable. You want people to have such a good time on their main that they're tempted to play an alt. The die is kind of cast for season one here. I mean, they could do a lot of tuning and stuff, but a lot of these changes are going to take, I mean, you'd have to take these classes back to the wood shop and really tune them up and change them. And they've got a whole bunch of changes coming. I know Paladies do, but if you actually look at the talent tree, it's rather disappointing at this point, but we'll see what they do. Hashtag pug life matters. And to all my pugs and casuals out there, you keep shining kings and queens. Fill that vault and then go enjoy your life. Do whatever. Have some fun. Do some fishing. That's what I suggest. Oklahoma out.